Today on Muscle Car, it's an F-Body extravaganza. We're kicking off an all-new project with a stock-style second-gen Camaro rebuild. The Tribute Trans Am shows off its old-school looks and modern technology and take a ride in the Camaro that had it all from A to Z. Hey guys, welcome to Muscle Car. Our shop's looking a little empty around here, and that's because we've been pushing projects out the door left and right. Well, all this empty space left a little bit of a vacuum. And look what it sucked in. This 70 and a half RS Camaro is our next project. And no, we're not going overboard with it. We're getting back to the basics with a stock style build. No frills, just old school muscles what we're after with this one. It's been prowling the streets of California its entire life and has survived pretty much unmolested. Yeah, it's had a bad repaint in a non-stock color and a reupholstering that smacks of the 80s, but otherwise, it's all original. The RS option gives us the highly sought after split bumper front end, but since the Rally Sport package was only about looks, it doesn't have much to brag about under the hood. This stock 307 has given up the ghost, and since it wasn't really known for its performance, we're going a different direction. We know we want to stay stock, because these cars look great straight out of the box. So we could do a numbers matching restoration, but a base 307 RS, well, they're just not all that desirable of a car. When you ordered a brand new Camaro in 1970, you had a lot of options to choose from. So we're going to pretend like we have a factory order sheet and check off all of our favorite options. And when it's finished, it's going to look and drive just like it rolled off the showroom floor. The biggest, baddest engine that you could order was the optional L78, the 375 horse version of the 396. One problem, they were only available in the SS and only 600 of them rode off the assembly line. Now, our Camaro was the basic RS, so we're going to be building a recreation of the rare RSSS L78 396. Add in the Z28 wheels, GM's lime colored citrus green paint and black SS stripes, and it's going to steal the show as Project Limelight. The biggest change we need to make to transform this car is the engine. We found this 396 in the local classifieds. The reason we liked it is because it's complete and we may be able to reuse some of the brackets and accessories. Now, I'll tell you guys right up front, this isn't a 1970 motor. It's actually out of a 1972 GMC. That's all right, because we told you right up front, this is not going to be a numbers matching restoration. But the block is identical to what would have come in our car from the factory. And that brings us to a little bit of interesting history on the 396. Starting in 1970, all GM 396 big blocks were punched out to the 402. They kept the 396 badging on the smaller cars like the Camaro, Chevelles, and Novas because these engines had already earned a big reputation in the racing world. Then to add to the confusion, they marketed the same engine in larger cars and trucks as a 400. Now nobody really knows for sure why GM did this, but rest assured, regardless of what the badging or the brochure says, if it's a 70 to 72, then it's actually a 402. With visions of big block power dancing in our heads, it's time to grab the tools and pull some parts. Here's the original color right there. That means that these bolts probably haven't been out since the car left the factory. Putting a wrench to a basically unrestored car has a way of bridging the years between you and Joe Lunchbox, who is putting together Camaros for a living. So most of this thing, so most of this car still has the original hoses and clamps and everything on it. And that is why you pay a little extra money for a California car. No rust, stuff comes right apart. Not much in the drivetrain department is gonna be reused. Even the transmission's being swapped out for a manual. The wheels are good for rollers, but they'll be replaced with factory Z28 wheels. You can handle that wheel, oh, you got it. F bodies are subframe cars, so the front clips were pre-assembled before being installed on the line. This means it's just as easy to remove it the same way. Now we've got easy access to pull the heavy chunks out. I think we had a broken motor mount.
coming up. Find out what Project Limelight has hidden under the carpet, and later our 69 Trans Am is back for a test drive. Hey guys, welcome back to Muscle Car. Now, this isn't going to be the first facelift that this Camaro here has ever seen. According to the trim tag, she rolled off the assembly line in citrus green. And there's still quite a few places on the body where you can see the original paint has been hiding out for 40 plus years. And we knew that that color was going to be perfect for Project Limelight. The interior was originally dark green, but somebody's changed it to black. Neither one of those colors seemed exactly right. So we flipped through the option sheet and saw that the saddle color would look great with our green. And that means all this black stuff needs to go. A lot of these interior parts are pretty easy to come by, but others, not so much. So we're tagging and bagging all of it. Now many GM cars used a general assembly style, but as the saying goes, the devil's in the details. So take pictures if you don't have a photographic memory. With the doors gutted and pulled, we can make short work of the interior. The seats will be rebuilt with new padding and covers, and most of the console will be refurbished too. Pulling carpet can be a moment of truth. We don't know if we're going to uncover a pleasant surprise or a horrible nightmare. Oh yeah, can't ask for no better than that. Shoot, yeah. This is a pretty good feeling. Usually when we pull this stuff up, we're pulling the floorboard up with it. Man, I wish I looked this good at 40. GM used non-hardening sealant to install the glass, which is good because it makes it easy to remove, but bad because it eventually leaks. Okay. Well, the teardown is almost done, and this right here is the worst spot that we found on the entire car. We knew it was there before we started on this thing because we could see it through the windshield. Nice thing is they make replacement panels for them, so it's no big deal. One more major area that's prone to rust is above the gas tank. There it is. A couple of bolts, and we'll see if our luck holds out. Well, the trunk floor looks every bit as solid as the floor pans. Looks like buying a California car has seriously paid off. Now, we still have a few more parts to pull off, but that rear end is staying put for now to keep it easier to roll around. But later on in the build, it is going to get replaced with an SS Correct 12-volt posi. Up next, a Camaro with sophisticated looks, refined handling, and the power of a race car. Hey, welcome back. We chose a 70 Camaro for a lot of reasons. This marked the first year for a whole new generation of F-bodies. The styling was fresh, and 70 was a peak of the era for performance. Our SS is going to be a big block beast, but if you wanted a small block with real refinement and power to match, the Z28 was the car of choice. Today's flashback, a 1970 Camaro RS Z28. Chevy finally joined the pony car stampede in 67 with the sexy new Camaro. When it came time for the second gen, fans had to wait a little longer to get their hands on one. Labor disputes pushed the release to February 1970, halfway through the model year, but it was well worth the wait. Buyers were in for a radical departure from the 69. It shared the same wheelbase, but that was about all. Longer, wider, and lower than previous models, it took its styling cues from European sports cars like the Ferrari and Aston Martin. The roof was moved back to exaggerate the long hood, short deck look, and the rear got round taillights. Most noticeable was the front end, with the wide mouth grille and headlights molded into the fenders. A lot of people refer to second gens as split bumpers, but only rally sports came this way. The package included the bumperettes, 
turn signals mounted next to the headlights, and an extended nose made of Endura rubber. The new body style also fixed many flaws of the first gen, which was rushed into production to compete against the Mustang. The first gens were noisy, and performance handling was somewhat lacking so GM engineers added a new front subframe to the unibody that provided greater rigidity. All-out big block power could be had with an SS396, but for more refined road handling, there was the race-bred Z28. New Trans Am regulations allowed larger displacement engines, so Z's got a new motor to replace the 302. Chevy dropped in the LT1350 straight out of the vet. It made 11 to 1 compression, the highest of any second gen, using solid lifters, aluminum pistons, a hot cam, and extra large valves. For a small block, it made big power, officially rated at 360. Z28s came with the F41 suspension package, which got you higher rated shocks and springs and front and rear sway bars. Plus, you've got a posi rear end with up to 410 gears, power brakes, 7 inch mag wheels, polyglass F60 by 15s and a rear spoiler. Racing stripes completed the look and were exclusive to the Z28. This marked the first time the badging had no slash between the Z and the 28. Inside there was a new wraparound dash with gauges moved from the console up to the instrument panel. Now this one features the deluxe trim option. Z28s now came with your choice of either a turbo hydromatic 400 or a Hurst 4-speed. There are several one-year-only features to help spot a 70 Camaro. Look for a chrome C on the nose. Badging on the trunk is unique too. This was the only second gen with Camaro by Chevrolet. Inside the bucket seats should be low back with adjustable headrest. This was also the only year that Z28s had a gas pedal hinged on the bottom and the only second gen Zs that came with a 12 volt rear end. Frank Marullo has always loved the second gen. Oh, the car's great to drive. It doesn't really have a weakness. Um, it's got a lot of power, it's got great brakes, and it, it handles really well. And his son loves them for another reason. We don't see a lot, and usually we're the only ones at a car show. Nobody really knows what it is. That's because the second gen well, was a victim of its own success. You see, it was such a hit that the new body style lasted 11 years, the longest of any Camaro. So the 70 usually gets lumped in with those later models that had far less horsepower. A lot of folks just don't realize how unique and powerful the 70 version is. It's a car that almost guarantees you won't be catching any Z's. After the break, find out why our Tribute Trans Am isn't just another pretty face. You're watching Muscle Car. For a DVD copy of this episode, just go to PowerBlockTV.com and order your copy for just $5.95 plus shipping and handling. Start your own Muscle Car collection, delivered right to your door from the PowerBlock. Hey guys, welcome back. You know, I've worked on a lot of really cool cars since I started here in the power block. And the best day in the shop is the day that you can finally put the key in the ignition, fire up that ride, and take it out for a cruise. Well, for the year one Trans Am, that day has finally come. This poncho came to the shop as a running, driving 69 Firebird. After we blew it apart and patched up the rust, we installed a new rear end and suspension. Modern power plant, it's an LS7 and 4L60E. I fabricated a custom roll bar and we strapped on a massive set of honeycomb wheels. To give it the classic TA look, it got a coat of arctic white topped off with a set of blue stripes. A new drop top went on and after some final assembly, we left it with year one to complete the interior and tie up those loose ends. And they did an incredible job. Now, year one, President Kevin King has put at least a couple hundred miles on this thing. But today, it's our turn to take this beast out, see what we created. Speaking of beasts, <laughs> what are you doing, man? Oh, uh, just riding around in a quiet vehicle. What are you doing? I'm uh, getting ready to take the year one Trans Am out. You want to go? You got to quit doing me. hot laps you, in that thing for a minute, though. You were going to leave me, wasn't you? Hold on, I'll park it. <laughs> All right, come on, let's go. Pretty good. No, 
Now I've driven a lot of first gen F bodies and this thing is a whole nother animal. On the outside, it's got the classic styling that marks the first year of the Trans Am. But under that disguise of classic muscle, it's got the guts of a supercar. With all the modern technology packed into this ride, you could drive this thing every day in downtown traffic with no worries. And yeah, look really good doing it. But if the back road twisties are more your style, the Detroit Speed suspension will keep those BFGs stuck to the pavement. Thanks to year one, this is one more project that we can finally put in the history books. But I'm not quite ready to hand the keys over yet. We still have a few test miles to put under these wheels. But for this week, we're out of time. So until next time, we're out of here. Hey Rick, this thing looks good and definitely rides good. And I think I've got the traction control disabled. <laughs> See if this thing can do a big smoky burnout. <laughs>